Hello everybody and welcome to another in-depth airsoft gun slash possibly cat review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the WE Mauser M712 gas blowback pistol. As you can see it's a pretty cool looking pistol, very iconic. Uh, this isn't a C96 as a lot of people will immediately think. It is indeed the later uh, Schnellfeuer or something like that full and semi-automatic pistol, the M712. Alright, let's get into it. Now I don't normally talk about any real gun history or information normally in these videos, but it's kind of interesting with the Mauser M712. Essentially the C96 was one of the first commercially successful semi-automatic pistols, as I know most of you will know. And they didn't immediately make a semi-slash-full-auto version, as some people might think. It was actually the Spanish who started producing copies of the Mauser in full, uh, full automatic, which was for the Chinese market who had an arms embargo at the at the time and essentially weren't able to get rifles, which made these pistols very popular. Uh, so the Spanish took advantage of that and started producing fully automatic versions. Mauser didn't want to be left out of that and started producing this. Now, as you can see from the markings, this isn't actually a Mauser, despite that's what me uh, that's what I was calling it. It's got these. I guess um, traditional Chinese markings. I don't know. I'm, I don't know uh, my Mandarin slash Chinese. But what I assume this is is it's meant to be a perhaps Taiwanese production of these. I think someone I read somewhere that the that Taiwan made some of these. I haven't really looked into it much, but it's kind of a shame that it has these markings. I'd almost rather it be completely plain so that you could add your own Mauser markings because I'd rather that. But I mean, they're not too garish or obvious, so it doesn't detract too much from the look. Now, I'm afraid I don't have the box to this pistol, which I know lots of you enjoy me uh, talking about. I did buy it secondhand. I was pretty close to just buying one of these outright, but then I saw one come up on the forum and it was pretty cheap. So that's how I ended up with one without a box. It also didn't come with a magazine. Uh, which is why it was so cheap. I'm not sure about the story behind that, but normally these come with a 20 round extended magazine, which I think kind of ruins the look of these. So I went out and bought one of the 10 round magazines, which are pretty easily available for these. So I'm going to get rid of the cat because he's getting a bit annoying and we'll carry on. Now I've got to say that WE have quite quickly, well, over the last couple of years, become pretty much my favorite airsoft manufacturer. Not due to the quality of their products, because you still get, every now and then, you get some kind of weak metals inside them. And I wouldn't say they're on par with Marui for uh, longevity and actual skirmish use. But for my purposes, which is really as a collector, um, they produce some really interesting guns. Loads of different models. They have a huge variety of different models they make. And they're constantly adding to it. A couple of days ago, um, they had a video of some of their new guns it looks like they're going to be making desert eagle they're going to be getting into revolvers they've got a really tiny little colt junior thing which looks pretty amazing um so that's exactly exactly the kind of thing i like so yeah we i'm a big fan of lots of their other guns essentially the the pattern that they're doing at the moment is taking japanese guns like this maruzan p38 uh this is the we version they take the japanese gun and they improve it make it in metal, and I absolutely love that they're doing that. They're really making some great guns, so this is definitely better than the original. This certainly is as well, the Beretta 84. And talking about the Mauser, if anybody's seen my previous video on the Marushin Mauser, uh, this is what's left of it, a box of parts, because it is made of the inside is made of the weakest metal imaginable and so many parts inside this are broken it's really a terrible design <laughs> uh, that we have managed to make a genuinely good gun out of by uh, changing changing little bits here and there um, better manufacturing by the looks of it and this gun actually works so there's the good news not perfectly, I should add. We're going to have to get into that. There's a few things which are a little bit iffy about the operation, but for the most part, this is a great improvement on that gun and easily available. Those All these Japanese guns can be a little bit hard to get your hands on, but the fact that WE are mass producing these improvements and parts are easily available as well 
It's great, and I'm very happy that they're doing it. Okay, so let's go over the exterior of the gun nice and quickly. As you'd expect from WE, it is made out of metal, the only exception being the plastic grips. Nothing external is plastic that I can see. Everything is metal, and everything is uh, put together pretty well. There is a bit of rattle and movement, and what that actually is is the slight bit of slot between the upper and lower receiver. And that's something that I'm trying to figure out where I could put a little shim in or something to stop that, but it's not too bad. And it's reasonably solid out of the box. I'll take the magazine out there. As I said, that's a short 10 round. I'll show you that in a minute. So the barrel is thin and long, which means that the WE internal um, thread adapter doesn't work because the barrel's too thin. It would just break through it if you tried that. Front sight is just molded on. Very simple uh, front sight there. Now the barrel, unlike on the Marushan gun, doesn't seem to be removable, it seems to be fixed. Sort of maybe like a friction fit and then the finish was applied over it. I'm not sure, but it doesn't seem to have any grub screw or anything that would let you remove it easily. So it seems to be fixed, which is good because on the Marushan it can come loose quite easily. The overall casting is very good. The finish is nice. It's got a almost a slight blue tint to it, similar to the P38. Nice shiny looking sort of gunmetal finish. I think it looks very good. It's wearing away in some areas, especially under the selector here, as you can see. And it does seem to be quite susceptible to scratches. If you have a look here, I think that one there is literally what the cat just did a minute ago. So it's a little bit susceptible. But that's only because the gun's in quite good condition, and once it has a few marks on it from use, it yeah, doesn't really matter. I've already shown you the markings, which are Chinese, I think. I'm pretty sure they're Chinese markings. Like I said, I'd rather there be no markings so that you can get these engraved with proper trademarks. But overall, the casting, the finish, everything looks pretty nice. Uh, there isn't any uh, areas of poor casting. Everything does fit together very nicely. Uh, I already said about the front sight, the rear sight is this um, traditional ladder sight, which goes up to a thousand probably yards. A little bit optimistic, gives you that kind of angle. And you've got a simple notch in the rear. The paint does seem to be wearing off the sight reasonably quickly. I think that the paint finishes on WEs can be a little bit hit and miss. Some of them are very resilient to wear and some of them do wear out a bit quickly. And this one seems to have a few parts that are wearing a little bit quicker than I'd want. That's sprung quite well, so it's not floppy. You all know how that works. I find that it's best to keep it on the 150 meter setting just because otherwise it doesn't quite clear the front here and you get a little bit of that in your sight picture. Show you the sight picture here. When I was saying about it not clearing, it's actually these two little wings here. If you have it on the lowest setting, you can sort of see them over the top of the site, which annoys me a bit. <laughs> so raise it up a little bit and it clears them, looks a bit cleaner, like that. Okay, so let's talk about the mechanism, because on the Marushan, it's very iffy. It really doesn't fit together very well and it just doesn't work. Essentially, unlike most pistols which have a proper disconnector system, so once the slide cycles, it pushes down a disconnector and it can no longer shoot again, which is how the semi-automatic works. The, this doesn't have that, and they copied that over from the Marushin. What it essentially has is a trigger that is set up so that it'll release the hammer, and then that click that you're hearing, and you can actually see a little part moving here. It essentially releases the sear, and then as soon as you get to that point, it slips and allows the sear to catch the hammer again. This is a system that has to be set up very well because if you've got too much space between the release and then the sear resetting, you end up with full auto and you, if you squeeze the trigger very slowly, you'll get full auto. On the Emerution, it really didn't work. It was pretty much full auto most of the time. Now this is kind of the other way around. Semi-automatic is very reliable. It works absolutely perfectly. I've got one of these uh, little follower stops in the magazine and I've just got some zero one Pro gas, but you could pretty much put any gas you like in this. If I show you a little bit of semi-automatic, regardless of how slow I pull the trigger, how much sort of creep I put on it, you get a very reliable semi-automatic operation, which is great. That's exactly what I wanted from the Marushan, but 
uh, it wouldn't happen. Now this full auto, the actual function of it and the noise it makes and the way BBs fly out of it is very amusing. But I've found that the, there's something not quite right in the tolerancing, so that if you pull the trigger slowly, now the trigger is fully rearward and the hammer hasn't released and that's quite dangerous because a little bit of pressure and it'll suddenly drop. This has only happened a few times, but actually the first time I pulled it out of the packaging, loaded it up and went to shoot it, that's exactly what happened. I had quite a few BBs in it. I pulled the trigger. Now I did release there with a little bit of a delay. I was pulling the trigger. Let's see if I can get it to do it. Right, it seems to be doing it now, but anyway, I pulled the trigger, nothing happened. Let go of the trigger, put the gun down, and <laughs> suddenly shot a couple of shots off. So, got to be careful with that. It's quite possible a little bit of polishing or something that just allows the trigger to move a little bit further back will do it. And sure enough, if you pull the trigger quite quickly, there's not an issue. But for me, I'm quite happy with semi-auto and I actually kind of wish they just made a standard C96 that was just semi-auto because the full auto is fun, but it's... Uh, it's not necessary, and the selector kind of ruins the look of the gun to me. I know that sounds silly. Uh, that's one of my complaints about the gun, that actually the selector is quite loose. The actual part, the actual selector that moves is alright, but the button, as you can see, it's not quite set up right, so it sticks out too far. And you can see, you almost see the spring underneath. Which is why I sometimes put it into the, kind of the disassembly notch, which is one click forward. It's not a proper position but it keeps the button in and just it functions semi-auto when you do that. So that's the way I have it. It stops it flopping about. But if you have it in one of the normal positions, there is this annoying wobble. So yeah, I tend to keep it forward like that. Um, talking about the trigger and the hammer, it's a very big hammer, but the actual action and everything feels very nice and crisp, much better than the Marushin, which doesn't feel great. This is actually a really quite a satisfying trigger. Everything feels very good mechanical, you know, mechanically, quite a good clunk to it. And of course the best thing about a gun like this compared to all of those HFC uh, non-blowback guns is that you've got a fully working bolt. I say fully working, that's not entirely true. Uh, the gun doesn't operate in a short recoil function uh, manner. The upper receiver doesn't move. On the real one of course the upper receiver will move back slightly to unlock the bolt. This just has a freely moving bolt and the upper receiver doesn't move unless you're disassembling it. So the bolt has got a slightly different finish, it just looks painted rather than the proper sort of maybe chemical or powder coated finish of this. It looks like paint and it's kind of coming off and then you've got this slightly different finish part uh, for the extractor which I'm kind of tempted to polish up because I think that'd look nice. Uh, keep in mind that on the real one, at least on the Mauser M712, the bolt and the kind of operating parts, the trigger, are left in a silver finish, at least on all the ones I've seen. So I'm kind of tempted to polish these up, but it's a bit of a pain getting into these areas. I kind of need to get it uh, sand blasted if I was going to do that, or shot blasted. Uh, but it's not, not a real problem. It all looks very smart overall. So here's your bolt. Obviously underneath there you've got your loading nozzle, which has good um, sort of suction there. Now it doesn't retract quite far enough if you wanted to buy a stripper clip and stick it in there just to look cool doesn't go quite far as back uh, back as the real one would. But overall it's quite smooth operating and is a much more satisfying gun to operate than that Marushin. Talking about operation and comparing to the Marushin, my absolute favourite thing about this over the Marushin, other than maybe that it actually works, is that it actually stops firing or um, locks back on the last shot, which is great. So unlike uh, the Marushin, which will just carry on shooting, as you can see here, this actually has a follower system that has a, a little mechanism here that operates a tiny little bolt stop inside there, which I'll show you, very similar to like on an AR-15 or something. It's actually a similar system to what you get. And this is another review that will be coming out on the WE Apache MP5. You get a little lever here and it prevents it shooting, but on this particular one it, it locks back the bolt like that. And of course there's no external bolt release, so it's simply a case of putting a BB or a follower stop in there. And there you go. 
so yeah that, that's great that they actually not only made the gun work but they actually put a a real improvement in there and now it will lock back properly uh, when you're shooting so yeah really happy with what we uh, we has done with that right let's talk about the grips so the grips are imitation wood of course they fit very nicely it's quite a complex shape that they're actually fitting onto so um, I think they've done quite a good job with the casting. They look all right. They're a little bit, you know, they're devoid of any grain or anything. They're just that kind of brown color, which is why I did invest in some real wood grips, specifically these reproduction Mauser Red 9 grips. Now, I'm not sure whether they actually ever put Red 9 grips, or sorry, they, they made 9mm versions of the M712. I think they're all uh, 763 Mauser. But I thought these would look cool anyway. However, they didn't fit at all. These are, these are made for the real gun. They had a big uh, chunk of wood on the back, which is meant to fit inside the frame, and they were just a completely wrong size. So, so far, I've sanded them down to the right size and restained them. But I had to make the back, back of them flat because the shape on the back was completely wrong. And essentially now what I need to do is get some wood, make it to this shape, glue it on, and then they'll actually fit in the frame properly. But I think once that's done, these will look pretty good. But yeah, a little warning there. Perhaps grips from the Marushan, if you find uh, wood grips made for the Marushan gun, that'll work. But guns made for the, sorry, grips made for the real uh, gun, real C96 or 712, won't fit. Uh, it's good, always good to have a little project uh, to work on those, so I'll, I'll get those fitted and maybe make a new video once they're done. Okay, what else can we talk about? Magazine release is re reasonably positive feeling. Does make a good click when you put it in. As I said, this is the 10 round magazine. I'm not sure if all of them come with that uh, red gas router there, but this one does. I actually bought this from Zero One and it was labeled as short magazine for the Han Solo blaster or whatever they call it. WE have a company called Armour Works or something, seems to be part of them who take their pistols and do custom versions and such. And this this gun, they make a Han Solo DL44 blaster off, which is pretty cool. It's very expensive. But yeah, Zero One sold these magazines fitting as fitting the Han Solo gun, but of course they do fit in this. And this is a 10 round mag. Although let's verify that, as I usually do. Right, so I've actually fit 11 rounds in there. It seems to be all right. Let's see what happens if I, if I drop number 12 into the chamber there, see if this fits in. Uh, I have to push it a little bit harder, but that does seem to fit in, which gives you a 12 round capacity. Now I'm gonna to top it up with gas, and let's see if it can shoot all those without running out of gas, because this magazine is quite small, so I'm sure some of you will be concerned about the gas capacity. Let's give it a go. Right, so that is 12 shots, and the slide did indeed lock back, and it was reasonably powerful even on the last shot. Magazine is a little bit cold, but I reckon we could even get some uh, more BBs out of that. I'm going to reload it again, let's see how many more we can get out. Alright, so that's another 11, I haven't topped up the gas. Let's see if we can get any of these out. I think that was 10 shots. Yeah, it actually fired all of them, but it didn't have enough gas to lock the bolt open. Empty. That's pretty good, actually. Twice the amount of BBs um, as gas. That didn't sound right. Uh, one, one fill will get you at least 20 shots out of this, which is pretty good. Of course, full auto is going to be a slightly different story. I'm going to fill it up with gas. I'm going to let it just warm up a little bit because it is quite cold now. And let's do a little bit of full auto. Okay, while the magazine warms up a little bit, let's talk about the hop-up, which works pretty well. Definitely better than in the Marushan, although that's probably not a fair comparison because the Marushan was in 8mm and they never shoot very well. Essentially, it's a tiny little Allen key inside here. Oh, actually, no, it's not an Allen key. It's a tiny little flathead, which actually makes that a little bit more awkward because getting a little flathead in there, that can't be easy. Um, I've never had to adjust it. The, the kind of ranges I'm actually able to shoot at at my house, um, I haven't had to adjust it. But certainly within the 10, 15 meters I've been shooting at, it's perfectly adequate as a skirmish uh, sidearm. Definitely on par with their P38, their other pistols. Not quite Marui. I know I, know I always say that. They're just not. 
Um, they don't have that same magic hop up as Marui's do, but it is adjustable and you've got a reasonably long barrel. So this is actually quite a powerful pistol. No chrono, uh, no chronograph still, I know, don't have one. But it was just definitely on par with something more conventional looking, uh, like the P38. Definitely skirmishable. If you want to buy one of these to actually use it, completely don't don't go with a Marushan. This is what you want. Now you might be thinking that I've missed quite a big chunk out of this review, which I've just remembered about. <laughs> and that is of course this, which it comes with. Um, I was really excited about getting this with it because I thought that's so cool that you'd be able to use it as a carbine. Upon actually using it a few times around the house, uh, I can't really see myself using it all that much. I, I don't think I'll take it skirmishing. And it's just because the whole thing is plastic, and although it looks quite good, the wood grain looks decent, it's just a bit flimsy feeling. It, you know, you can flex the whole thing. It's quite, it's reasonably thick plastic, but it's so hollow sounding. And there's a spring in the um, attachment mechanism. I'm just gonna stick it on here. So it just slots on the back like this. Luckily it's not eating away or chewing up the, um, the slot too much, as I was worried it might. Let's just put it on. Now it's quite stiff because it's actually, it, it pushes up against the grip. So that's how it gets such a good fit on here because there is hardly any movement at all actually. It's quite impressive, especially between the, the actual lower receiver. It's, it's actually very good, the fit on there. And that's the little latch that uh, keeps it on there. So yeah, they definitely get good marks for how it's actually attached, but there's a spring inside here, which you might be able to hear. And it, you hear that noise every time you do anything. Don't know where you can hear that, but every single time you do anything, you just get it resonating through the things. It's a big hollow bit of plastic. Let's do it again. You should be able to hear that. It's really annoying. <laughs> and that combined with the fact that it's, it flexes around. It's nice that the gun comes with it, but I almost wish they just offered a cheaper version of the gun that didn't come with it. Uh, the length of pull is very long. The stock that comes with the M712 is actually longer than with the regular C96. This is a very long stock. And yeah, it definitely fits on securely, but it's, you don't even need to press the latch to open it. That's how flexible it is. That keeps the gun in there. Let's actually put it in because I know some people might act, might still want to use this as a holster. Of course, it only fits if you've got a no magazine or the short magazine in it. The long one does not fit. Goes in like that. A lot of movement. Luckily, this big spring up here keeps it secure. And it holds it in there pretty well. But like I said, it can open without pressing that button because of the flex. So I wouldn't personally trust having this on my hip with the pistol in. It's a nice novelty. It's a cool thing to show people, but... I would never actually take this air softening with me. And from what I've seen, the hardware on this for attaching is completely different to the real one. So don't go spending loads of money on a real steel Mauser stock because I don't believe that they fit this. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure I saw an image that showed the real one has a much wider slot. So beware of that. Okay, so I've got 11 rounds in the magazine. I've got it gassed up. Let's see how it does a full auto mag dump. I'm just gonna hold the trigger down. Let's see what happens. Now that is actually pretty impressive. Considering the gas capacity in this, um, I was kind of expecting that to run out sooner, but it locked back after 11 rounds. It's very cold, so I don't think shooting anymore will um, be worth it because I don't think it'll last for much longer. But that is pretty impressive, and it actually um, should bode pretty well for those longer 20 round magazines, which of course got double the magazine capacity um, of gas, at least. So if you want to skirmish, grab a couple of the larger magazines. I think this is really quite a usable pistol, and like I said, compared to my other guns, it's got to be at least putting out 300 FPS. It's got quite a long barrel on it. Most of the gas is being used to push the BB out rather than the slide. Now the last thing I want to talk about before we finish up is this assembly, which is actually much better than with the Marushan. It's much more realistic and it's a lot easier. Very simple. So you cock the hammer. You've got a little switch here which you push up. The upper receiver and the trigger assembly then come out. You're left with the metal frame. You've got the trigger mechanism in there. 
or really just the trigger most of the mechanism is here now this is all quite delicate it can pop out quite easily so be careful with that and then this what essentially happens here is once the bolt has been cocked and there you go the trigger bar just came off got to be careful with that push that back on once that's been cocked once that has been cocked this can then be removed and you've essentially got your trigger box. You've got everything that's going on here. Sorry, the hammer kind of, the lock work essentially, you've got the lock work. Now this mechanism on the side is your bolt lock. So I just lost that spring, excellent. When this pushes that up, so the magazine interacts with that, this goes up and blocks the bolt. That is your, not, not disconnect there, but that's the little thing that holds the, um, the striker forward to get all the gas out. And here's your safety, which I didn't talk about. So the safety, like on all Mausers, you push it up and it is safe. It's pretty simple. Right, let's get this gun back together. Oh, actually, before I do, show you something that's, again, much better than with the Marushin. If you want to take it apart further, rather than this being a screw on the Marushin, you simply push it in, turn it 90 degrees, and the retaining, uh, so that would be the firing pin on the real one, but the retaining pin for the bolt comes out. I haven't actually taken it any further apart than this, but I assume you pull that part out, which relieves tension on the spring. I'm not sure how you do about that. And then the bolt will come out. Like I said, I haven't actually taken the bolt out. Um, but yeah, I like that this is actually much simpler than on the, on the Marushin. You just have to turn it a little bit and it comes out rather than it being a screw. So yeah, I'll show you putting the gun back together quickly because it is actually quite simple considering the complexity of the design. So if we put our trigger mechanism back on, so that slides on the front, no, the back, yeah, that's it. Let's get you back in focus. So that slides on like that. And then you bring the lower receiver on from the front and it all goes back together. Really is quite simple actually, considering this is a 120 year old design. <laughs> Right, so hopefully I haven't missed anything too important. Of course, leave me a comment, ask any questions. I think that really covers it. Uh, there's that safety I was talking about that can be operated from uh, if the hammer's cocked or if it's not, just blocks it. I like that when you put it on, um, when the hammer isn't cocked, it'll move it a little bit away from the firing pin, which is quite a nice little touch. Oh, another feature. Uh, it's one of those ones where Simply pulling the hammer and shooting it won't do anything. I always like that. That's realistic. The slide actually has to be racked for the firing pin to become a, sort of available for being smacked. If, if you watch down in here, as I retract the bolt, there you go. When we get to halfway through travel, it actually pops out the firing pin, which allows the hammer to hit it. So yeah, very realistic, really, in its operation. And overall, I'm just impressed in the way that this has been built. And in the way that they've taken something that barely functions as an airsoft gun and turned it into something that I would genuinely use, especially on semi-auto. Stick up, keep on semi-auto, buy a couple of spare mags. This is just a, a great gun. Really very impressed with it, especially for the kind of prices you can get them at. I think they're about £150 with the stock, brand new. I got this one for less than 100 which is a really good price, I think. So yeah, like I said, any questions, leave me a comment. Thank you very much for watching.